Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I didn't pop the chat out, so let me just go fix that. Hey, you three. You have to be quiet. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, CB was going to be here, but she is unwell today, so I've taken over her channel. As happens, although she is still here in spirit, as she's currently controlling all of the banners. Sorry, I'm telling my phone that I have, in fact, taken my medication so it can stop bitching at me. You're a lovely ghost, CB. I'm a ghost. <laughs> Uh, SD Hudson had been here, but she's asleep. She made the lovely timer or countdown, the countdown that we just used. Hello, so spoopy. CB is coming for Fox's gig. Oh no. Thank you. So we're going to give it a couple minutes for people to kind of trickle in especially since um it is the first social sprint of the evening and i think the productivity sprint might be wrapping up i don't know i know that i had to mute them a little bit ago but i think they are i'm trying to exit a game and my computer is just like no you cannot the audacity <sighs> So, I made peach crisp tonight already, and it has been consumed. Well, yes. not all of it, but like a third of the pan. <laughs> they have started selling apple cider in uh -huh. the stores here, but only like the one brand. And I'm like, no, I must hold out for the better apple cider. Because I don't remember what the brand is. I just know that when I see the jugs, it's a fine cider, but there are better ciders that will start coming in. So I'm like, I have to hold out. But damn, did I see it and suddenly everything within me that is Southern was like, I want that. <laughs> They're There's going a, for another sprint. Nice. Cool. There's a farmer's market right over there. And on Saturdays, they have all these jugs of apple cider. It's <gasps> like, I should probably get one. I just haven't had cash. Yeah, that's fair. Yes. I like uh, dressing up for any reason at all. I don't really need <laughs> much reason. So definitely October streams. I'm like, yes. Oh, um, okay. I think I have the other chat popped out because the comments in this chat make no sense with <laughs> what we're talking about. Was it the productivity chat? Yeah, because um, I had opened up this chat and I was trying to copy it and paste it, but it, I think, only copy-pasted, or it copy-pasted the productivity chat instead, somehow. So, like, I see in the stream yard the, um, you know, comments. So it's like, yay, costumes. But then in the chat, it was like, oh, I see a, f I don't even see a 14. There's a 20. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but I see now it's because of the kitten races, probably. So, is everybody excited for the, this weekend? The dubba dubba dubba? Stoked. What? Yeah. What is everyone working on this weekend? So this morning, at like one in the morning, I get a text from my sister. Are you awake? It's like, uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I missed it. So I get a call this morning. She's like, uh, you want to co-write with me for this anthology to submit for co-written dark fantasy stories? It's like, sure. So, um, 
That's what I will be doing during the sprints, is be on the phone with my sister as we brainstorm our dark fantasy short story idea. I love it. I'm watching two sprints at once. Awesome. I try to do that sometimes successfully, sometimes unsuccessfully. Depends on how they how the sprints are timed. Uh, Blake, what will you be working on? Um, I'm going to be trying to catch up on a fan fiction I haven't worked on in ages. That's fair. I'm going to be... Uh, listening to the draft of my critique partner's manuscript and then hopefully I'll be able to do my outline for or finish my outline for uh, my current project. I have a really big and um, ambitious goal of starting the draft this weekend. We'll see how that goes though because <laughs> uh, I've got PMDD and it's it's been fun this week so yeah. My fanfic is my backup project for Nano. <laughs> my nose is like really itchy right here on the bridge. And so I've been like trying to itch it, but it just won't stop. Super excited trying to work as much as I can to finish drafting the final act of my project, Appalachia. Appalachia? I have forgotten how to pronounce the word. <laughs> I'm rewriting chapter 19 tonight, then drafting the last eight. Cool. Cool. So, uh, how about you two go ahead and introduce yourselves while I pull up my thing of a thinger. <gasps> Kitty! Aww. Nice tail. Nice tail. <laughs> um, my name is Lauren Nettles. My channel is Lauren Nettles. I do all things spooky. I'm actually vlogging the Walmart Echo, so, um, I will have a video coming out again instead of just timers. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what a concept. We your timers, though. Content. What? What is this? So, yeah. I think I have been exclusively yeah. using my face and your timers this past month. <laughs> nice. I just made three more 45 minute witchy timers for Jess. So, but, here, yes. here you go. Apparently during the first sprint, I'm going to be looking at bingo boards because poor Cody has had the ha, had bingo boards on the Milo Note for review for like two weeks, and I have just been too dead to look at them. So <laughs> today I was like, Cody, I finally looked at them. I just think this one thing needs to be edited, and he's like, I'll, I'll do it after work. And I'm like, Thank you, you're awesome. So those will be in the media kit. What about you, Blake? All right. Well, I'm Blake Bynum. Um, as you see, I use they, them pronouns. I don't have a YouTube channel. Um, not a thing I've gotten into yet, but you can keep up with me on Instagram, underscore Blake Bynum, underscore. Um, and um, I mostly deal with writing. I'm a cat mom. Um, so there's probably going to be lots of cats in this video if they try and harass me. Um, and I also do a bunch of art, which you can see um, sometimes in the um, community uh, art channel if you're involved with that. And yeah. Amazing. Sorry, I like realized I could make the light shine on me <laughs> from my tiny compact. Hi, I'm writing Mom Smith the Elnacid. This isn't my channel, but on my channel, I talk about writer things, parent things, and writer parent things. Uh, I host live streams very similar to these on Mondays. I will be hosting a write in this coming up Monday, but the Monday after, I will probably be doing a Let's Talk with Hocus Pocus. There it might be a scheduling issue with trick or treating. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. That's a later Candy Sam first. issue. Candy is more important. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're, ge they're getting boo at the zoo. They'll have plenty of candy. Ah. Hocus pocus. But anyway, uh, I have a spooky flash fiction up on my website if you would like to go, you know, read that. It's like less than a thousand words, I think. Uh, and a murderous villain short story. 
they're they're called until pizza do us part and all that glitters i'm on the tail end of a migraine so forgive the brain fog if you want to keep up to date with all things sam you can sign up to my newsletter i'm also one of the two co-organizers of the dubba 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 so yeah you can help support that by you know going to the main channel liking it sub can't like the channel subscribe to the channel ring a ding the bell and all that good jazz also give this stream some love like it subscribe to cv when she makes videos they're great so <laughs> my shadow fox is making fun of me he's like excuse me while i did he's like sam excuse me while i demonstrate i'm an actual cat oops not oops i think he was referring to my compact thing but yeah so we are a social sprint today not a productivity one which means that we're going to be doing more socializing and not as much sprinting what time does our stream end though because we do need to get in 50 minutes of sprinting so i think i have the power to put up a poll cb i don't have the power to put up a poll <laughs> so put put up a poll for me in chat uh for sprint link what are the options uh that's for cb to decide <laughs> when she puts up the poll because i'm pretty sure we need to get 50 minutes in for the social one to do a poll you have to go to the youtube side on the stream and in the chat mm -hmm. there should be an option to click poll yes i don't have it though yeah, she's asking how in the chat. Oh, okay. Oh, I see the private chat now. It, it didn't pop up for me. I was going to check a thing when our, how long our stream goes. Aren't they two and a half hours? That, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, well, no, social streams are three hours, so. Oh. Till 10. But we do have topic banner or er, topics. Oh my god, I'm gonna just chop off my news, y'all. You be Voldemort. No. I, have to I have to send my children for tissues so I could just itch it with my nail. Shh, super bagel, calm down. A super bagel will not be. Replaced. I have to keep them below a certain volume because uh, I will just naturally start going to match their volume or be louder, and nobody needs a yelling Sam. <laughs> I love when the pole makes a hand that's flipping you off. <laughs> no longer, no longer. They said no. We want. We can't have that here. <laughs> Yes, the poll is up for everybody who wishes to go vote. I'm working Project Life, which is an LGBTQ erotic romance between a non-binary princess and their boyfriend. I remember this from the opening ceremony. Very intrigued. Cody said it's okay. All the hearts. The cat is beautiful. She so is for, beautiful. for our first topic tonight... Are there any paranormal or spooky books that, you know, anybody has enjoyed? Whether recently or just in general. Should I go get them off my shelf? Yes, go get all of them. Well, not all of them. I don't know. That <laughs> Here's my entire bookcase. <laughs> or it just wheels it in on a gurney. Well, not I a gurney. It's kind of anchored to the wall. That's why you gotta use the, the thingy. Well, I guess if it's like physically anchored yeah. but um i'll go get some okay uh blake well laura's going um yeah i can definitely answer that right now um i've recently been trying to reread it by stephen king um i have a very long and interesting history with it <laughs> um because at the ripe age of four um my siblings were watching the um, 1990 version 
of course. With Tim Curry. And I was like insisting that I had to watch too. So was terrified of clowns for years. Absolutely hated him. Um, my mom had to shower with me because I was convinced a clown was going to come out of the drain. Understandably so. Um, yeah. And then like a couple years ago, I got really into it again, um, especially when the new releases came out. So I read that, watched the new movies, and now I'm rereading it um, just because trying to experience it again and all of its complicatedness. My, the first time, like, I was not allowed to watch it, like, ever, because my dad had seen it too young, and it gave him a phobia of clowns, and so, like, my parents were just like, yeah, no, so by the time I saw it, I was an adult, and I I can't engage with horror media in, like, certain ways, because my brain just can't turn off the suspension of disbelief. So I don't, I don't really get pulled into horror media, which is why I'm a roller coaster adrenaline junkie. That's that's how I have to experience that. But uh, yeah, so I was mostly just bored watching it. Like everyone else around me was, you know, like they jump and stuff, and I'm just like, I don't. Why is this movie so long? <laughs> and it's like they had there were two VHS's so you had to take the one out and then put the other one in and I'm like is this necessary (laughs) but it's like which is funny because Stephen King is one of my husband's favorite authors so it was very much one of those things where I'm like I am watching this for you but it's it's fascinating to me how like wildly different people interact with the same media. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to get it on my e-reader because my hands hate when I try to read from my copy. Why do your hand? It's a very oh, thick it's so book. Thick. Yeah. Yeah. I was Makes like, sense. are you is. I was like, do you get so pulled into the story that you're like trembling? And then I was like, it's probably a more practical reason than that, Samantha. Like, <laughs> it's the girth. Uh, RK Stumblebear reads, or has read Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marino Garcia. I have heard very good things about that. I want to read it. I just have not yet. I love the book Grave Minder by Melissa Marr. It got zombies. And other worlds. Other world zombies. I'm intrigued. All right, Laura, would you like to go over your pile? (laughs) Okay. Um, First up, classic Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Middle grade. Um, Yeah, so... I was a kid when this came out. My mom read it and was like, your siblings cannot read this. This is too scary, but you're just old enough. You can read it. <laughs> and then there's the scene with the hand on the window. And I was like, oh! <laughs> so <laughs> very good. Very good. I just recently so there's... read it and it's not as scary, but. So the, I, I know a fun story about the editor's daughter with that book. So apparently Neil Gaiman's editor for Coraline would like read the chapters to her daughter to gauge whether or not it was too scary for middle grade and her daughter seemed fine. Well, years later after publication, her daughter admitted to her that no, she was terrified the whole time, but she didn't want to say anything. She wanted to know how it ended. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, (laughs) backfired. (laughs) My other two middle grades that I have here is The Stitchers mm-hmm. by Loreno or Lorian Lawrence. Uh, so uh, this is about a girl whose dad recently died. So she and this other guy who are both in like cross country. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're like, something's up with the neighbors. They're all acting a little strange. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a mystery about the creepy old neighbors. The whole side of the street is just old people that never seem to get any older, but they seem to uh, be uh, rejuvenating themselves somehow. And 
Yeah, it's pretty creepy. Uh, the next one is Hide and Seeker by Decca Herman. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, this one, a kid has gone missing for over a year. He comes back, but he's not the same. And all of these kids go to the house for like the welcome home party for the kid, realize the kid is messed up, and then they start playing a game of hide and seek, but it's a cursed game of hide and seek, and uh, they end up getting sucked into the other world of hide and seek. And it's pretty disturbing for a middle grade. Uh, this is definitely more upper middle grade. Um, but very good. If you want a short read, this is like a novella, is The Possession of Natalie Glasgow by Haley Piper. Uh, this one, I guessed the possession angle, but uh, it was it was still a satisfactory ending. The, the last image was very good. Um, so it says, Margaret Willow has never met an 11 year old as dangerous as Natalie Glasgow. Natalie spends her days comatose, but at night she prowls her mother's home, unnaturally strong and insatiably carnivorous. With doctors baffled, Natalie's mother reaches out to Margaret, an expert at the supernatural. But even Margaret is mystified and terrified by Natalie's condition. She's dying, and before she dies, she might kill someone. Has demon clawed its way into an 11-year-old girl? Or does the source of the nightmare lie with Natalie's dead father? <sighs> dun, 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 dun. So yeah, that one was fun. Um, yes, child. Rosemary's Baby. Yes, go eat food. Ira Levin. Throw that balloon out. Don't chew on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pretty much the same as the movie uh, that is based off of this book, which was really cool. But yeah, it was good. Sorry, um, what book is it? I was preventing a child from suffocating. Rosemary's Baby. Oh, Rosemary's Baby. Yes. Yeah. So I recently read that for the Summer Scare Readathon. Very good. It's it's a quick read. Um, and the last are all by my favorite author, Genji Ito. Yes. So, Love Sickness. Um, there is a figure dressed in black with pierced ears that roams this foggy town, giving out bad fortunes to those who ask their crossroads fortune. And uh, mm -hmm. mass deaths start occurring, and really cool. Smashed is a bunch of short stories. Um, so try not to be noticed when you eat the secret nectar, otherwise, you'll get smashed. What horrific events happen to create the earthbound people tied to a certain place for the rest of their short lives? A strange haunted house comes to town but no one expects it to lead to a real hell. Welcome to Jinji Ito's world, a world with no escape from endless nightmares. And then this one, Shiver. I like this one better than Smash, but they're both good. Um, this one has the, the hanging head balloons. So, yeah. Yeah, he's like one of the, I think he's one of the most prolific and one of the most popular uh, horror mangaka. Mm -hmm. So, Shiver, he, like, fabulous. He an entire, almost an entire table at conventions whenever I go work them. This is his most well-known work, Uzumaki. Uh, the town is contaminated with spirals. So, so, this is my favorite of his so far. I'm currently reading his No Longer Human one. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. 430. Uh, Sorry, oh, my youngest. So this is actually being uh, adapted? Yes, into a movie. Ooh. So, and it looks just like the drawings. Like, ah, I'm so excited. Oh, I love when they get the styles to, to work that way. It was supposed to come out like two years ago, but the, the studio was like, we need more time. And they showed us the first like 30 seconds and we're like, take all the time you need. <laughs> we need more time, please. Please, here's yes. our offering. 
it looks good. So yes, you may take your time. But yeah, those are. My yes, favorite. Natalie, if you have any, share them with us. Um, all of my books are well. My physical books are currently in a storage box because I still need to buy bookshelves for maybe this room. That's the other thing. I don't yet know where the bookshelves are going. But I have a short story anthology. Uh, it's called 666, The Number of the Beast. I really I haven't read it in years, but I remember enjoying a lot of short stories in there. Uh, like there's there's one in particular about werewolves and werewolf puberty that was like really interesting and a, a different take than... I normally see, I don't even know that I've seen somebody do it that way since reading that. And that came out a while ago. So I would highly recommend that one. Like there's there's a wide variety of stories in there. That's just the one that I remember sticking out to me at the moment. And then recently I read The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, which is also like a middle grade and just phenomenal. I love everything about that book. Yes. That one right there. Yeah. It's on my list to read. I think I'm going to pick up the audiobook narrated by Neil Gaiman for the kids as a bedtime story after they finish their current book, which is book three of the Percy Jackson series. But my middle child is like, I'm kind of getting tired of Percy Jackson right now. And I'm like, well, that's because for your birthday, you got the box set. So you've been reading a lot of it. <laughs> no, he's not talking to me. He got really loud when, so I thought he had something to say. I'm double checking. Sorry, just as a question. You good, baby? Does chat have any books, any more books that they would like to share? Cody has one. I like Wolf Song, which is a paranormal MM romance about wolf shifters, and Starlight by Hannah Lee Kidder for spooky short stories. Uh, there is a novel, which is a a a, a, a w, is it WW or WLW? Either way, it's it's a queer lesbian novel by Amelia Atwater Rhodes, I think by the same name. So that had thrown me off at first. I was like, Wolf Song's not men, men, men. Wolf Cry, that's what it's called. Wolf Cry. Which is also about shifters. But not they're not uh, both wolf shifters. I think one's a wolf shifter and the other one is a bird snake hybrid. It's like book three or four in a series, so there's a lot of context there. I highly recommend the Keystra series, though. Like, I very much enjoyed it. I think it's YA. Oh, don't remember for sure. Uh, well, um, if anybody else wants to share spooky books or anything, feel free. But I think... Uh, we'll do our first sprint and then we'll come back to paranormal movies. Do, do, do. I have to go fetch the timer. What did, who was the winner of the poll? 30 minutes? Yeah. I had like several announcements little notifications on my YouTube and quite a few of them were just like CB's going live and I'm like yes is she now I would have never guessed hey nobody told you to start you were distinctly paused 
All right, give me, I have to check out her banners. I didn't see if she has a sprinting banner. <laughs> there's, there's a Matt sensor banner. <laughs> All right. Who wants to do the countdown? You do? We'll come over here. No, we're counting down from three, not ten. Ten. Three, two, one, see you all. Woo!
And we're back. How did everybody do that sprint? Uh, I took some notes. So, yeah. I'm switching out the ends. I so, got 443 words. Nice. Noise. I, um, let me take that out real quick. So, I called my, well, yeah, I called my sister because you reminded me I needed to talk to my sister about something. And we got some Boo at the Zoo details uh, situated. I went and added bingo boards uh, made by Cody to the media kit. So if anybody wants to do the Dubba Dubba bingo boards, there's one in there. There's also two blank templates so you can like make your own bingo board. There's a prompt generator, which should be linked uh, in the description. I don't know what CB did or didn't put in the description. But yeah, and then I started listening to the draft, which is my goal to finish listening to this weekend. It's somewhere in chapter seven now. I re listened to chapter six because I realized I didn't remember much of what happened in chapter six because brain fog is fun. And <laughs> it took me way too long to realize this wasn't Sam's channel. Hey guys, I had a migraine, so I'm starting late tonight. Also fair. Seems like they're going around this week. I had a headache today too. I took today off work. I just had my oldest bring me some pain meds because, you know, tail end of my current flare up. At least I hope it's the tail end because sometimes with the migraines they start going down, then they come back up, and you're like, no. I How want dare. All Hello. I'm compiling a list of questions, so not really counting word counts, but I'm being productive. It works. 140 words. Aw, oh, yeah. I'm up to 1032 words in this chapter rewrite. Nice. Woo. I, yes, child. Yes, baby. I am getting very tired because for some reason my body decided I didn't need to sleep until 10 30 this morning and then i had to force myself like use all of my brain tricks that i knew to actually get some sleep and then i had to get back up at like 2 30 so i could go pick the kids up from school so oh i'm not talking to me so yeah i am tired but it's fine i get to sleep after my sprint <laughs> or my stream later mm -hmm. Going to jump over to productivity playlist, but thanks for the first sprint. No problem. I hope you get all the productivity done. Yes, thank you. Remember to like the stream. So, our next uh, topic. Do, do, do. Spooky or paranormal movie? I thought Artemis was on the screen. I was like, wait. That is not your cat. It is not. This is Hallie, short for Halloween. Uh, hello, Halloween. You're a calico. She is. She gets spayed yeah. next week. No. Mm -hmm. oh. But she's looking forward to that. She has no idea. Her <laughs> poor innocent soul. She's, she's living in blissful ignorance right now. I shifted my ankles and everything went. Well, so easy. Well, the ones that I have within arm's reach. Frankenstein. Oh, nice. Brighter we Frankenstein did, is my favorite. We just did a Let's Talk on Simulacrums on my channel on Monday. Dracula. Classic. Yes. All the classic monster movies. So I bought those two, and then they came out with the box set of all the Universal oh, Monster okay. So I had to get the box set as well. So those are my duplicates. One do. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. They just get an extra special. So I have them on that bookcase and on this bookcase. So I'll go get some movies. Okay. <laughs> um. In that case, this is this is perfect because this means I can finally talk about Kate Beckinsale. You may. Um, 
Because I can talk about there's Van Helsing, an amazing tape on um, yes, Dracula. I, I didn't realize putting Hocus Pocus on the pole would bury her so thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She got so buried. But it's worth it. It's Hocus Pocus. So... Um, and then we have the entire Underworld series, which I've watched since I was a little kid. So completely obsessed with that. Um, speaking of like zombies, getting into like the Resident Evil series. Um, I know a lot of people who are like hardcore gamers are like, ah, oh, stupid Resident Evil series. But I like them. I grew up on yeah, them. Yeah, fuck it. I think they're good. Yeah, they're great. Um, it's technically a TV show, but like Charmed. I have to think of that because just like the, the 90s one or was it 2000? The old one or the new one? The or 90s one? one with like Alyssa Milano and Holly Marie Combs. Okay. Yeah. Um, I love Charmed. Something made me think of Charmed. I don't remember what it was, but um, Sisters. There's a lot of talk of sisters that you <laughs> There's a lot of talk of sisters. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, it was the mention of duplicates because I have the entire box set, but then I also have a couple seasons that are duplicated of Charmed. Oh. So um, there's that. And then I think we already covered like the It movies. They're like, okay. Um, I think the book has like a little bit more potential to it just because there's so much more to it. Um, but, anyways. And then, yeah, I think that's it. Zombies, vampires, more vampires, which is... We can talk about what we like about the movies and stuff. That's fine. We don't just have to list them. Like, uh, I like the original Dracula, uh, because Bela Lugosi is, like, a phenomenal actor. And he's the reason that vampires in Hollywood now have the Hungarian accent. Because he was Hungarian. Mm. Isn't Boris Karloff the actor for Frankenstein? Or yeah. am I thinking? Me. Yeah. Yeah. And the mummy. Yes, he's he was like he was the monster actor of the yeah. era. Yes. So my favorite zombie movie, I don't own it, unfortunately, okay. yet. But Train to Busan. I have heard such good things about that. I watched a cinema therapy episode on that. And now I want to see the movie. But then it I'm is like, Korean. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. Yes. Um, Ringu scared me. Dark Water scared me. Um, Juon, the grudge, scared me. Um, but so I I brought out these ones. But um, what are these ones? So let's see. The oldest one I have over here is the Nosferatu from 1922, I believe. Oh yeah. What do you know? It doesn't say. Whatever. I think you're right. Um, but yeah, so this is yeah, F.W. Murnau, Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror. It is a silent film. Uh, so it's this classic one. But um, I also have the 1970s remake in German of Nosferatu with Klaus Kinski by Werner Herzog. Nice. I watch this every year. It is slow. It is a Warner Herzog movie. <laughs> but I love it. Um, and then I have Mary Shelley Frankenstein where um, what's this? Kenneth Branagh. So Professor Lockhart plays Dr. Frankenstein. So good. And then Robert De Niro is the monster. And Helena Bottom Carter is um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is her name, right? I've seen too many off adaptations. Uh, For the woman that, I think it's Elizabeth, yeah. Yeah, the sister of the sister that gets married to Dr. Frankenstein. (laughs) So, yeah. 
fun times is great. Uh, the comedy version, Young Frankenstein, by that is um, my husband's like one of his favorites. Yeah, by what's his face, Mel Brooks. There we go. I was about to say Gene Wilder, and I'm like, no, That's he's the actor. playing Young Frankenstein. Yes. But yes. Um, I also have Dracula with um, Sirius Black. What's his face? Oh gosh, I don't know brain. if they're if they're newer than 1920. I don't know who plays anyone. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman plays Dracula in this one. And uh Keanu Reeves is in here as well. And then I have Interview with a Vampire. Star Study Cast. Very, very good. Um and then I have The Conjuring. This one freaks you out sometimes. It's just so good. I watch it a lot. Like, every year. And then um, The Conjuring 2 is also good. And then I have Crimson Peak, which is more of a gothic romance. Uh, but there are ghosts in there. It is a Guillermo del Toro. It's not everybody's favorite. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. And then <laughs> the TV series that I love so much... I don't know if it counts, but Hannibal. It's I, mean, just I guess all three it counts. Seasons. I've never seen it, but I mean, we counted Charmed, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, so you know, Hannibal the Cannibal. Um, season one, well, okay, so it's three seasons, but I can't show you the covers. It's a spoiler. Anyway, Will Graham <laughs> is an FBI person. He's a teacher, and he has this mental condition where he can empathize with anybody. And so he can empathize with the killer and get in their head and see why they did things so that they can catch him better, so they can get a profile. Okay. And, um, so he gets pulled on to work this case that has to do with a cannibal in episode one, and he gets a little too close to it, and he's, like, having some mental problems, and the FBI person above him was like, we're going to get you a psychiatrist. Like, Guess who the psychiatrist is? It's Hannibal Lecter. So Hannibal's like getting in his head and it's just so good. It's so good. It's so dark. Yes. I shall take your word for it. I avoid cannibal media. The sound design is perfection. The cinematography is gorgeous. The acting is awesome. Just uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne is. I never knew what the plot was. <laughs> so, have you never seen it, or did you watch it and just didn't? Because, like, I could see both being a, a thing, which is why I'm asking for clarity. So, this takes place before the Hannibal movies, uh, uh, the, the Silence of the Lamb movie. So, it's prequel series yes i've never watched it okay good stuff yeah those are my spooky things i'm trying to remember i've suddenly forgotten every movie i've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> a fun one that is a guilty pleasure is van helsing with hugh jackman my husband and i just recently rewatched that because, like, see, for me, I don't have guilty pleasures. I just like what I like. And if people don't like it, they can fuck off. It's really not not any skin off my back. <laughs> I love that movie. I think that movie is phenomenal. It is a good, campy, spooky time. Uh, they have one of the most accurate portrayals of Frankenstein in mm. media. Or, like, Frankenstein's monster. Mm. Like, a, a lot of people don't know this, but the the original black and white movie actually completely destroyed the message of the book and is is absolutely almost nothing like the book. Like, Is it the, the 1915 silent film that's like 15 minutes? It's like the first, no, not that one. Like the first oh. feature length one where okay. Frankenstein's monster doesn't really like talk and okay. where the, and where Frankenstein's name is Henry Frankenstein, yeah. not Victor Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. Which, 
is funny because like in the book his name is Victor Frankenstein and he has a friend named Henry something. And in the movie, it's Henry Frankenstein, and he has a friend named Victor. And I am dead convinced, I have no evidence, but I am dead convinced that whoever wrote this screenplay just mixed the two names up, did not realize it till recording was over, and was like, I am never fessing up. I am just <laughs> never telling anybody I did this fuck up. <laughs> so, but yeah, because like... It's, it's just so, like, the movie has a very strong and distinct who is the monster, who is the man message, right? And it, like, portrays the monster as very sympathetic and innocent. Very, like, uh, what's his name from Of Mice and Men? The, the big guy. I can't remember his name. But the, the, one, the um, one who accidentally murders somebody by hugging them so he's like very very much got like his vibes where he's he's innocent he just doesn't like know his own strength and stuff whereas in the book the monster is an asshole like he, he dead ass murders people like just like he murders frankenstein's little brothers because he's pissed about something and then like tells frankenstein you better make me a bride or like i'm coming for you frankenstein starts to do it and then says no i can't do this again destroys her and then so the monster is all like all right bet i'm gonna see you on your wedding night on his wedding night murders his his wife and then like fucks with this fucks with dr frankenstein so bad because he like leads him up to antarctica but he's always like a mile or something ahead it's such a weird mind game and everything so yeah the movie and the book totally different and uh in the in the book frankenstein or the monster is eloquent dark cynic cynical well educated and in van helsing he's like that granted he's he's not as as kind of twisted and fucked up as he was in the book but other than that the only other frankenstein thing i've seen like that is herman munster from the monsters <laughs> i love the monsters so much the monsters so good i i recently watched rob zombie's monster movie <laughs> It was it was a special special experience. I will I not saw, be repeating. I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, I might pass on this one. It's it's so close to being good, but not. And oh. it's like you can tell it was made by a fan. Like the like Rob Zombie is very obviously a fan of the monsters, and he very much loves it. I mean, I mean, if you didn't know that from his song Dragula, then you definitely know it. But it's also, it's one of those things where a fan makes a piece of media and they just very clearly did not understand the assignments. <laughs> they just, they didn't get what made it good in the first place. So it's just like... <sighs> because, like, in, in the movie, like, Lily is very much that the whole you know 1950s 1960s like housewife who's like super sweet and is like mildly nagging in her sweetness but also like very naive to certain things and it's like that's not how she was i mean it is and it isn't so it was like i said it was just so close so close to being good but but just missed missed the mark i thought the guy playing the grandpa looked pretty close to the grandpa Oh yeah, oh like like character design wise, very good. But like Herman was in a rock band. Yeah. <laughs> in the movie. And I'm like No. Also, in the TV show, they had been, I think, married for a century or so when they moved to America. And in the movie, they like just got married. <laughs> or like it's just it's it's wild. <laughs> It, it's an interesting one-time experience, but like I said, would not be repeating it. Has made me want to go back and rewatch the show, though, because I was also ashamed of myself that I didn't realize until watching that movie, and I w was reading some Munsters trivia that Lily's cape is a casket liner. Like, her silk cape is a casket yeah. liner. I'm like, how did I never notice that? That's cool. Sorry, I have tea. But yeah, I, I love... I don't think there's a Van Helsing movie 
I don't like. There is a Van Helsing series that I have mixed feelings about. I need to finish watching it. But it's on Netflix. Mm. And it's it's got vampires and, and zombies, or at least a lot of the vampires act like zombies. So mm-hmm. it's it also it's got some fascinating twists to it. So I recommend giving that a watch for Van Helsing fans. Shh, over there. But uh, Hocus Pocus is and will forever be a fave of mine. I haven't seen the second one, so nobody say anything about the second one. <laughs> I've been waiting. Me and my husband wanted to rewatch the first one and then watch the second one together, and we just haven't had time. So, but we're doing that. I think next my copy is down there, but um, might be before Christmas. It's one of my faves. It's one of the only Tim Burton movies I enjoy. I think he was only the producer for that one, wasn't he? Yeah, apparently, if Tim Burton is a director, I don't like the movie. And if he's just the producer, I like it. Mm -hmm. Like, Uh, did he direct or produce Coraline? I have no idea. All right, because I haven't actually seen that one yet, but I want to see that one. But that one looks interesting. Yeah. He directs uh, the new Wednesday Adam series. Yeah, I have. I'm being hopeful <laughs> because I've seen some things, but I worked on the first episode. That's awesome. Like the visual effects? Mm-hmm. It's in the trailer. Um, so you've already seen everything I've done. If you've I seen don't the watch first the trailer. trailer. <laughs> the only thing I've seen for the new um, the only thing that I've seen for certain is like I've seen a few screenshots but I largely avoid trailers because they're just too spoilery nowadays which I do understand there are studies that have been done that the majority of people actually enjoy media more when things have been spoiled because they're not like like a lot of people Blind are side. taken out Yeah, a lot of people are taken out of media because they get confused because they're trying to figure out what's going on or like what's going to happen. Or there's just like a mounting anxiety because they don't know how things are going to turn out. But then there's so I'm very much in the minority of people who who like that's how because I I was so mad when the trailer for How to Train Your Dragon 2 came out. I was like, how can you give away that twist? What was in the trailer? Oh, it's your mom! Oh! I was like, are you serious? Are you serious? I'll watch teaser trailers, because I feel like the teaser trailers are what old trailers were, but then I won't watch anything past the teaser trailer. So, but I did see an interview with Wednesday Adams, this is actress. Uh, I cannot remember her first name, Ortega. Jenna Ortega. Yeah. And how she said that she t- wanted to bring Wednesday's Latina heritage to the role. And then they like showed a scene where she says something about uh, Dio de les Morta. I just butchered that, I'm sure. And um, I was like, huh. Like, I never thought about that before. But I'm like, yeah, she would be, right? And then my husband saw something. So, like, he saw the actress and he was like, wait a second. He's like, she's Latina. And I'm like, yep. And he goes, is Wednesday Latina? I'm like, I mean, at the very least, Gomez is. So, yeah, she would be. And he, he like, spent the next 15, 20 minutes just going, I have been robbed so many years <laughs> because he's Latino. And he's just... It was so funny because it's like, yeah, we always like he and I always like knew and thought about the fact that Gomez was, but it's like yeah, that would then make all of their children as well. So it's we're very excited about it for that part of it too, because that'll very much be something that's never been really done in Adam's media before that I can remember. Mm-hmm. I can't see you pet that kitty. I did such a poor rush job on my nails that they're mildly textured and I'm just trying to flatten them. <laughs> I'm like, no. 
Before You're supposed just, to like, let me assume the whining position. He looks like a he looks like a ghost dog floating in the abyss. <laughs> the black couch. <sighs> do we want to do a twenty minute sprint or a twenty five minute sprint? I'm just getting the timer prepped. Twenty five. Okay. They're creepy and they're kooky. Mysterious Nuke stuck in my head. No. Uh, okay, so who's or or what favorite paranormal monsters? Frankenstein's monster. Fair, but which version? Herman? <laughs> Adam? The monster? The Boris, Boris Karloff. Karloff. Chat, feel free to uh, share yours as well. Blake. Oh gosh, I feel like this is such a tough one. Like, what type of monster? <sighs> you can be vague. You can be specific. I don't. Know. I, I feel like I've consumed like just like a s too much like sapphic vampire media that like it has a special <laughs> place in my heart. Um, so, like, shout out to the Carmilla web series and but <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I I really like um, like demons, like not necessarily like the Conjuring demons, but like just like you know anything where it sort of like is deemed a demon and it has like you know the horns and the wings and stuff. Um, I'm actually doing like a rendition of a fan fiction for Critical Role where one of the characters is like a demon. So that's that's what I've been working on instead of the fanfic I should be working on. So I like whenever they portray demons as just like corporate workers. It's like this is just their office day job. It's like one of my favorite things. But uh, as, as far as like my favorite paranormal like monsters if i had to narrow it down to a type probably werewolves because or shifters in general because there's just like always that whole like internal battle that i enjoy i also like when in media there's like there's the the turned versus the born and like things that actually make like differences with those both like culturally because it's like oh well these shifters grew up shifters so they like have a different kind of culture and everything because this is just you know what they're raised with and then there's the ones that are turned who grew up human and everything so like they see things a little different uh recently i've been watching teen wolf i'm halfway through the final season and i think they do it pretty well because like all the born shifters and stuff they're like well sometimes you accidentally murder somebody it is what it is you're just gonna have to accept part of you has died and move on with your life and the like the turn shifter uh the mc is all like no <laughs> that's we don't just we don't just accept that we accidentally murdered somebody and move on with our life and they're like well, what else you gonna do so it's also like the the born ones are like yeah you know just harness your anchor or harness your anger use that as your anchor to stay human and the mc's like yeah no that doesn't work for me that just makes me turn faster and they're like well we don't know what to do for you then and then his just human friend who just happens to know a lot about werewolves is like i got you buddy nice it's like human solutions for sort of human problems uh, other than that, I there's just so many different monsters, and I I tend to like most of them, which I think can transition into the next topic, which is like how closely should fiction be to the original inspiration for like monster myths and stuff. I think that like there should be some connection to it, and not just something that's completely like out of the blue bonkers um mm -hmm. 
Like, I think, like, kind of, like, how a lot of people think of, like, you know, the vampires having shiny skin in Twilight compared to um, traditional vampire myths. Like, kind of, like, that. Like, that kind of energy. Um, to where, like, I feel like Twilight's become such a classic now that it doesn't seem as, like, out of the blue. But... See, I have a mildly controversial opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with the Twilight vampires. Diamond skin and all. I actually think she did a pretty good job portraying monster vampires i just i have an issue with the fact that she didn't do any research on them apparently and has admitted to that but like like i don't i don't see other than it's like horribly impractical and would immediately give them away if anybody actually saw them in daylight but like i don't i don't because the Twilight vampires, this will be the only time I defend Twilight in any capacity. <laughs> I feel like it would have been a much better horror than a romance. But anyway, so the Twilight vampires are super strong. They feed off of blood. They're stronger when they feed off of human blood, but can sustain themselves on the blood of uh, lesser creatures. They, the only real way to kill them is to separate their body or their head from their body and burn them, which is a thing in some uh, vampire mythos. And uh, is, they're, they're highly predatory and they have a lot of, of uh, trouble fighting those predatory urges, like no matter what. And it's like, that's all good vampire things. That's like, that all fits for vampire things. Like, yeah, their skin sparkles, but you've got one thing that seems kind of silly, but not vampire thing. And then all these other things that are like actually really good vampire stuff. So I feel like because people just hate Twilight as a whole, they nitpick that one thing and they're like, oh, well, they're terrible vampires because they sparkle. And I'm like, well... You know, everybody else makes them super pretty. Why not? Except Nosferatu. He's, you know, Count Orlock is what Count Orlock is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone finds him pretty. Oh, gosh. I think this conversation also goes to, like, mythos and kind of... Like, you know, when people draw inspiration from, like, Greek myths and stuff and want to mm -hmm. adapt it, I feel like it's very similar to that, to where it's, like, yeah. how far can you stray before you're just kind of completely messing it? Um, like, I know there's, like, mixed opinions about Lore Olympus, which I've never consumed, and so it's just, like... I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, like, it's good in its own right, but then it's also, like, you know, what things are just, like, completely... I opposite from other stuff i think for mythology versus monsters is a little different because mythology has plot monsters just exist um mm -hmm. so when you go into like mythology and tales and stuff there's a a huge difference to me if somebody's doing a retelling versus inspired by if you're doing a retelling i expect you to hit all major plot points and core themes if you're doing inspired by i don't give a fuck what you do like you're just mildly inspired by this thing and like and i feel like lore olympus is not a retelling it's inspired by it is a completely original concept that takes its base from the mythology i also think that it does a little bit better job representing persephone or core's mythology than most retellings i've seen because a lot of retellings only uh address the like goddess of spring part they don't actually go into the whole thing of where she was a chthonic deity before hades existed within mythology she had a death cult so like that's one of those things uh that being said like i, I have a lot of mixed feelings about lore olympus because of a lot of other reasons but as far as like an inspired by piece of media it's fine it doesn't claim to be a retelling i don't think does it if it does, she's a filthy liar. But if she doesn't, then it's fine. <laughs> I think that but. we need to be able to take liberties. Like, we don't want everything to just be a rehash. Like, we need to be able to pull in yeah. new blood like into different Inspired stories. by. Yeah. 
For me, the line with the mythology is if I... I need to be able to tell that this is the creature that you say it is. Uh, and like one thing that frustrates me to no end is when a piece of media takes an obscure uh, creature from a myth and they take the name and then they make their own thing that's like nothing like the original one. And, and overrides like, it. Uh-huh. For example, the Kenna... Canamine? Canonine? I forgot what it's called. I think it's the Canonine from Teen Wolf, right? So they took the like base concept of the Canonine from Central American mythos, which is like a jag, I think. Ah, oh God, my, my head just started doing this. So fact check. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's a jaguar sh uh, shifting creature. Yeah, it's like warriors used to get possessed by a jaguar spirit that like specifically went after murderers or like sought revenge against things. And then there's the Furies, which are like leathery bat lizard things, depending on what's describing them. And they, you know, seek vengeance for or they seek justice for things. Well, the canna canna nine or canna mime, my dyslexia is like making me struggle. In Teen Wolf they like mildly reference the South America. That's the thing that gets me too, is they reference the South American one or Central American, one of the Americas. And, uh, but then later they're like, yeah, it's like the Furies and stuff. And it's like this lizard man thing. And I was like trying to look up stuff on the original one. And it was so difficult to find stuff on the original myth because all I kept getting was Teen Wolf Wikipedia's. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> no, why? Yeah. Yeah. So stuff like that gets me. But then like their version of the Banshee is they keep the core aspect, which is that she know like she can feel impending deaths, right? Yeah. And she she screams whenever she senses them. They have kind of evolved it to more than that. She's like a demi death goddess thing at the moment, but that's fine. Because to me, they like they kept the core of the monster. Screams, knows that death is coming, warns of death. That's all I need. <laughs> so, like I said, as long as I can like tell that this is what it's supposed to be, I'm all for creative freedom. Mm -hmm. There's a really cool chapter in Writing in the Dark by Tim Wagner. It's mm -hmm. a horror writing craft book. Um, let me find the chapter real quick. Okay. Sorry, run over my sheet. Ugh, I'm just running over my sheet some more. No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. The poor sheet. Roadkill. I sewed it myself. Um, okay. Chapter six. Page 72. Where no monster has gone before. Leave us this one. Or is it the other one? Okay, yeah. So, um, it's really cool. Put new clothes on old tropes. So, uh, it says sometimes you, something else you can do is take a horror archetype, a villain, werewolf, etc., and disguise it. Or as I sometimes say, put a new set of clothes on it. By doing this, you can retain the archetype's power and make it seem fresh and new by shedding its old and often cliched image. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here are some popular movie monsters and the archetypes they're based off of. Jason is the Grim Reaper. Mm -hmm. Freddy Krueger is Satan. Hannibal Lecter is Dracula. Norman Bates is the werewolf. And it gives his reasoning. Um... But you can also reverse a trope. So you can do a reverse vampire. So a creature that infuses life force into victims. A reverse werewolf, a creature that transforms others. A reverse ghost, a creature that releases spirits from others. A reverse cannibal, a person who wants to forcibly feed himself or herself to others. Would a reverse ghost just be an exorcist? Basically, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. There's a word for some of these already. 
but yeah. So like, I don't know, it just has some really cool ideas of like how to find the core of mm -hmm. a monster. So like the cores that he comes up with, like Predator, Agent of Death, Transformer, Duality of Self, a Tormentor, a Corruptor, a Disease Spreader. And so like, you break down monsters to their core mm -hmm. and then build a new monster based off of that same core. Yes, I love so, the like, original monsters. I also really like one of the things that I appreciate in series and stuff is when they're taking a like monster concept or a monster archetype such as vampires they do it all the time with vampires and they'll be like so these are my things and they're called this and then like somebody in the series is like yeah yeah like vampires but xyz and it's like ah yes good we're establishing a base point and then telling mm -hmm. me you know changing my expectations based on this base point so yeah i feel like that happens a lot with zombies too yes like there's so I many like walkers and what is it yeah, like? It's like when you go into zombie media they have to let you know which zombie you're expecting or the slow yeah. path exactly clickers Bunnies. so many different words what is a clicker zombie it's from the last of us the video game oh right okay hi baby i know of the game i have not played the game that's on the laptop Sorry, I hear. I suddenly heard furious typing, and I looked over, and my child's playing a game, and he's like, "We're running away from something." <laughs> like, assumed something started chasing him. Probably a fast zombie. <laughs> are you being chased by zombies? No, those are Xbox. An Xbox. Next. Oh, next spot. It's okay. Oh. Okay. The gaming consoles became sentient and are after us. That's why I was like, an Xbox is chasing you. What the fuck? All right, so let's go ahead and do our other sprint. I have to share screen. Because instead of just clicking the remove to minimize it, I just always cancel the share screen. And then cause myself more work. I'm editing a banner. I did not successfully edit that banner. <laughs> I like went to create and then I clicked out of it. So it undid my edit and I'm like, mm, there's a save button there. Do uh, who wants to do our countdown? I'll do it. All right. All right. Three. Two, one.
And we're back. Yeah, I know it's nighttime, but they gotta pee. Let them outside or they're gonna pee in the kitchen. You want them to pee in the kitchen? <laughs> Sorry, my like my pit bull just went to like the door because she wanted to go pee. So I was like, someone with the dogs outside. And my youngest was like, you mean like outside of the garage den? And I'm like, no, I mean like outside in the yard. And she's like, but it's night. And I'm like, the dog's bladder don't care. <laughs> so how did everybody do that sprint? Okay. I've brainstormed three possible plots. So I don't know if I should keep brainstorming or I don't know. Sorry, could you say again? I had to send my oldest to assist my youngest. <laughs> they need to go pee. She just doesn't want to go out in the darkness, but she has to. Sorry. I I brainstormed three different plots for possible dark fantasy short stories to write with my sister. So awesome. I don't know if I need to keep brainstorming or I don't know. Uh, Blake. I got 601 words done. Nice. Nice. I got, oh, and I forgot to math. 14 pages listened to. So, which is good because I'm like starting to fade a bit. Can I read my plots and you guys tell me which ones you think are stronger? Sweet. Yeah. So I have three. Plot number one Kid needs revenge for his dead family. Goes to the undead swamp for a magic weapon to kill the aristocrat who is responsible for his family's death. Sneaks into the palace with the help from a cult. Fails to kill the person, so the weapon takes his life instead. Plot number two. Kid is orphaned and taken in by a mad wizard. Goes through tough training. Must kill the mentor wizard to come into their own full power. Plot number three. Kid watches his mom get burnt at the stake of the witch. He lies to the, an aristocrat, so his village gets raised by an army of thieves to teach them a lesson. Uh, he is granted amnesty in exchange for this info, but he is betrayed, and so with his final words, he summons an eldritch being that takes out both sides. So I'm very, I have so many questions with number two already, so definitely that one. And then I think I lean more toward number one than number three, just on a, like, personal preference side, so... Mm -hmm. I definitely think that number one sounds pretty interesting, um, especially with like the turn at the end of the knife, mm -hmm. um, claiming his own life instead. Um, yeah. Fun, fun. My husband is asking you weird questions. <laughs> Where is my phone? Oh, there it is. In a couple, or soon the children will be like the desktop will kick them off. So there will just be a horde that goes that way. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So, chat, if you would like to share your progress, you can. My husband's like, do you ever miss dating? And I'm like, as in us dating? Yes? What the? And then he just puts LOL, I love you. I'm like, sir? <laughs> what are you? Sir, what's going on right now? Uh, all right, so we're probably gonna wrap up the stream in about 15 20 minutes. Uh, the time slot is for three hours, I think. 
we can end it two and a half, but yeah. Okay. We'll just see how long it goes. Uh, so I have a, a, a yeah. Excuse me as I reboot. So I watched a K drama, I wanna say last year that was called It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And I felt like the genre that fit that one the best would be like a romance horror. It was definitely like a suspense horror, but the romantic plot was also like super integral. So definitely a romance horror. And ever since then, I don't know if it's that like syndrome where, you know, you don't notice white cars until you own a white car. And then all of a sudden you notice white cars everywhere. So, like, now I'm seeing a lot of horror romance. But I feel like I've been seeing people talk more about horror romance lately. So, it's just like, what do y'all think of that? Well, I think like, there's a difference between read horror romance and paranormal romance, right? Yes. It's, uh, so, paranormal romance has been, like, a thing forever. Yeah. But horror romance is when it's because paranormal is a subgenre of horror but when it's like suspense suspense horror romance or thrillers and romance like that side of it I for one am very intrigued by this combination of genres and I want to see more of it I mean like I feel like I'm a sucker for a good love story like I grew up in like fandoms and shipping and stuff so i'm just like <laughs> and it's kind of a survivalist love story too right it's like high stakes high adrenaline it's like like kind of the same like why why action romances kind of work yeah like i think i think it works i think that like it's interesting like i mean i'm a sucker for a good like ghost story and like the human falls in love with a ghost type thing <laughs> oh my gosh there's a comic on webtoon it's like called my boo it broke my damn heart <laughs> oh my god first of all i was like webtoon has the best troll advertisements ever and one of their things was like, will you be my boo? And it had B-O-O. -O. And I was like, the fuck is this? And then it told me. And I was like, all right, all right, we'll read it. It had such a bittersweet ending. And I'm like, I hate it here. I am done. I'm retiring from Webtoon. <laughs> I did not retire from Webtoon. but <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, like that. That's like. Te technically that could count as a horror romance too so what came to my mind uh -huh. was a I think it's a manhwa called Killing Stalking that's not a romance though I know but that's what I came know, to mind I know that a lot of fandom wants to say it's a romance but yeah. that is most definitively not a romance so yeah. Yeah. I don't know like I think of like the oh, no, haunting my of Bly Manor, almost. I guess my boo is not a romance either because it doesn't have a happy ending technically. <laughs> so my bad. Um, Bly Manor. Oh my gosh. Maybe I cannot, for the life of me, remember how the plot of. I know I remember watching Bly Manor. I remember really enjoying Bly Manor, but my brain goes, mm, no, it was. You're not allowed. No memories for you. Remind me of the romance in that one. Um, so you have a romance between Danny, who's the au pair, um, the main character, oh, yeah. and the gardener, Jamie. Mm -hmm. And it like kind of like slowly builds, but then it becomes like really central to a part of it because Danny gets like possessed by the Lady of the Lake. And so like their relationship trying to make it work and then it kind of just falling apart as she gets more and more possessed like it's like very central and it's like super sweet yes but does it does it end happily no it <laughs> then it's like danny drowning herself in the lake 
then that's a love story. Because romances have to end happy. Love stories are the sad ones. They're two different categories. Which I'm very, like, stingent on because if you give me a romance and it ends sadly, I will be so pissed. I came here for a happy ending. Love story, I'm emotionally prepared. But, like, a romance needs to have a happy ending as defined by the genre Does that okay. mean love story by taylor swift should have been called romance instead maybe, well, well, maybe. i don't know <laughs> like the that. idea well she compares them to romeo and juliet so maybe not that's a tragedy well that's actually a comedy that is but by modern definition would be a tragedy, but by no definition was ever a romance. So, I feel like one that would end happy would have to be one that breaks the horror trope. Like, not really, because um, like, because like, all you would need to do is just have two people fall in love throughout the the thing and then survive together, which is what happens in it's okay to not be okay okay fear street yeah. the netflix movies fear street i have to watch it it's centered I'm around the love story between two girls and um like the haunting of like a witch or whatever where there's like a mass like serial killers mm -hmm. and so they have to like survive that and survive one of the girls getting possessed by like the evil serial killer spirit and it ends happily so I'm just like, it's like, it's three movies, but like it's centered around a couple, but it has all the horror mo um, elements. Yeah, so that might count. But yeah, like in It's Okay to Not Be Okay, it like, it's a TV series and it centers around like these two people who, uh, it's been a while, I think one Okay, so there's a guy and he has a his older brother is autistic and he himself works in a mental hospital. I don't think his brother is a patient there or if he is like his his therapist is just there, but he like doesn't live there. They live in an apartment and that's just the brother's occupation. And then there's the female love interest is a horror mangaka that his brother really like loves and they end up like meeting and uh she she really like wants the main character who doesn't really want much to do with her at first but like so she kind of she doesn't use his brother but like she like because she she genuinely likes and gets along with his older brother and she he's an artist and so she's like okay they're gonna make a book together and so then the the younger brother kind of has to associate with her through that and they they kind of get to like know each other and learn about each other and all the while they're in the background there's like stuff the, the like suspense part of it is that you're there's a mystery unraveling on like her past trauma and the like actual antagonist and everything so and then like they basically have to survive a couple like horrific events together and so there's technically three characters but the the younger brother and the female lead are the the romance of it and so, like, I think in a horror, I think a horror romance would be both easy and tricky to do because you have to carefully balance both elements. And the antagonist, I think, would have to be outside the couple. Because if you have the antagonist be part of the couple, there's just, like, very few ways that that could end happy unless, like, you just have a monster serial killer couple which I'm not against I'm gonna look up because because I've seen a lot of people talking about horror romances lately and 
that's that's my thing. I'm like, are they talking about actual horror romances or? I guess warm bodies counts. That's a zombie movie, right? Yes. Yes, I think that one does count. Is horror romance? A thing? I like googled horror romances, and one of the related searches is: Is horror romance a thing? Paranormal romance or romantic suspense? Like, I think a cool concept would be to have like two amazing like killing machine people who can just like plow through a horde of zombies and they're like yes. they're, they're together and they're just a power couple yes i'm a yeah, hundred percent i would monster hunter couple yeah that's like van helsing <laughs> except not because that didn't <laughs> that didn't end well no, i was watching that movie and we got to the ending and I was like, hmm, I seem to have blocked this part from memory because I don't remember that. I remembered everything but this. So. It's all kinds of nope. But yeah. It has Chucky listed on here. Mm -hmm. The bride of Chucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. Is that a happy ending? They're not a very healthy couple. Hey, we didn't say it had to be a healthy romance. <laughs> it had to have a happy ending. I, you know, I clicked a drop down menu and it had The Exorcist listed as number one, and I'm like, what? But then it's like the ten, scary, the ten scariest horror movies ever, and I'm okay. like, oh. I just didn't read a thing, but I was so confused. <laughs> I, uh, I do not want to. I'm read getting that fan more. You. I'm getting more results for can you do horror and romance than horror and romance. <laughs> Paranormal romance is a subgenre of romance and spec fic. I mean. Romance is in spec fit. I think for like a horror romance to work, I feel like there's like always like couples in horror films, but like for it to be a horror romance, I think it has to kind of be like how Fear Street is to where the couple being a couple is integral to mm -hmm. the horror plot. And yes. not just uh look, it's a couple, they had sex so now they get to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely Definitely wouldn't count. They both have to survive, probably. Oh, yes. Unless, like, one... Unless one of them becomes, like, undead or something. Then, you know, they can True. make it work. And like, if one both. of them... <laughs> yeah, if they both... If they both become a... Uh, like, if they both become vampires, so they're both technically dead. But you know, like there's... Hellraiser, if it had a different ending, like bringing him back, but like he gets to stay back instead of like, yeah. I don't think that I've ever seen Hellraiser. Oh, I have an itch right at the edge of my eyelash line. What are you two doing over there? Okay, well, don't play on top of the desk. Go upstairs and watch your movie. What do you mean you can't? Why can't you? It's not bedtime. It's movie time. It's Friday. Okay, fine. Go to bed. I'm not going up there to put you to bed, though. My middle child has discovered he tries to be snarky. Because he's like, I can't watch a movie. It's bedtime. And I'm like, fine, go to bed. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm just kidding. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Heather. Hi, Heather. Hello. Nice creaky door. Yes, one of the cats opened it. 
They have some really strong paws. Like, that door is not light. It has metal running through it, apparently. Paws and heads. I feel like cats are more hard-headed than we give them credit for. My cat's looking around the room like, what, me? No. Yes, you, sir. You who just opened the- that door was almost shut all the way. But... Although, based upon the answers, I, I don't think anybody can give me any horror- other than, uh... Did you say Freak Street? Or Fear Street. Fear Street. It's based on the R.L. Stein books. Oh, okay. What are these romantic horror movies you give me according to IMDb? I will be the judge of this. Or not, because it's not loading. It's oh, like, no, no, you don't get to know. <laughs> Although I also question Google, because they said Let the Right One In was a horror romance. And I vaguely recall watching that one, and I don't know. I don't remember how it ends. I don't think happily. All right, I found the list on IMDb. They're movies. So number one is okay. Spring, Only Lovers Left Alive, Warm Bodies, Low, like L O, Habit, Cat People, Kiss the Damned, Spellbinder, Blood and Chocolate, Let the Right One In, Let Me In, The Fly. I guess I need to watch that again. I haven't watched it since I was like six. Uh, Dracula. <laughs> well, hold on. Okay, so who's the romance in Dracula is what I need to know. Because I think Elizabeth had a fiancé, right? I think it's uh, Mina, Jonathan Harker. I see. It's centuries old vampire count. Dracula comes to England to seduce his barrister, Jonathan Harker's fiance, Mina Murray, and inflict havoc in the foreign land. Yeah. If they're saying that Dracula and Mina are the romance, no. <laughs> but if they're saying that Mina and her fiance but, are the romance, maybe. But Dracula, like, kind of dies? <laughs> Spoiler That's alert. What I'm saying. Like, he dies, so it, it can't be a romance if, if somebody dies. I mean, if half of the couple is dead. And there's Fright Night, Underworld, Phantom of the Opera. I'll give Underworld. Yeah, that's a horror romance-ish. But Phantom of the Opera? Not that one, no. Wolf. Well, I, th I think for Phantom of the Opera, it depends on what kind, or which, which version. 1989. Because... Oh, I don't remember which one that is. But is that the one with um? What's his face? Robert Englund. No. Okay, then maybe, because uh, in one of them, like she and the one guy who's not the Phantom actually do have a genuine romance going, and they defeat he defeats the Phantom for her. But the one with Gerard Butler definitely knew. <laughs> Because that one, like, kind of romanticizes her and the Phantom a little much for me. Let me show you the poster. Hey, Was Freddy. Now he's Phantom of the Opera. I love that that's the advertising. He was Freddy. Now he's the Phantom. Freddy went and got some singing classes, everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I said, maybe that one. I don't remember exactly if it's that one or not. But there, there is one where there is a, a romance between Christine and the guy who eventually, like, saves her from the Phantom. So, I have part of why the Phantom's so angry. It's, it's actually, like, a love triangle. Uh-huh. I have this one version of the Phantom of the Opera where the Phantom is her dad. Is it, hold on. <laughs> I need to know. When he's her dad, is it, 
is he still like weirdly obsessed with her or is it just I kind of like a stage dad which is all a different kind of weirdly obsessed i have to watch it again it was just weird <laughs> Because I need, because like in all versions, he's weirdly obsessed with her and is in yeah, like this weird yeah. mentor student role. But I mean, like he was like a composer and he brought his. I think I'm getting them all mixed up. In one version, he's a composer and he does this masterpiece and somebody throws acid on his face and steals his masterpiece. Like, I don't know. I think that's the one where he's her dad. And so he's been privately paying for her lessons. I mean, sounds like that would be the most likely version for them to pull that he's her dad yeah. thing. But it was it it, it, was, it was still a little squeaky. Like, ugh. see, because like, there's that whole he kidnaps her, so he she will be his for everything. And I'm like, is that still a thing? Because. Mm. Why did they have to make the creepy thing be even creepier? Like, we did not need. Never put it past humanity to make things creepier. I don't put it past them. I'm just asking why. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I want answers. And even if I don't like the answers, I want the answers. See, in this description of Let the Right One In, it says that the teenagers form a tender and innocent relationship with each other. That's not romance. Or, I mean, like, it is, but not in the context of what this means. This means platonic. So This one also says ginger snaps, which I haven't seen. I was like, <laughs> I was like, they have cookies? What? No, it says two death obsessed yeah. sisters outcasts in their suburban neighborhood must deal with the tragic consequences of one of them is bitten by a deadly werewolf. I love horror fans, but I now question their understanding of an American werewolf horror. in Paris. King Kong! Oh my gosh, King Kong! King Kong! Kong is... <laughs> well, twas beauty slayed the beast. Is that like the old version of King Kong? Because I do yeah, actually think that like she and the ship captain had a romance and they okay. end up together. So, yes. Well, this is that one from the fine. 70s. Then, yeah, I think I think that's the one. Okay. It came from outer space. I don't remember that movie well enough. A girl walks home alone at night. That is a creepy poster. I mean, just the premise already. It's making of a horror movie. Interview with a vampire. <laughs> the birds. I was scarred from that movie. I don't remember romance. I don't remember a love story or a romance in the birds. Just birds murdering people. I know. I thought that was the <laughs> little, sh little shop of horrors. There we go. I begrudgingly allow it <laughs> I hated that plant <laughs> I don't think I've ever hated a monster as much as I hate that fucking plant but yes The Hunchback of Notre Dame 1939 I have okay, that yeah. one I'm, I'm sitting here like the Disney movie Is no the, the Lon Chaney Sr. Yeah. one yes that one Burying the X. Never heard of that one. I don't know, but I'm curious. <laughs> a guy's regret over yeah. moving in with his girlfriend are compounded when she dies and comes back a zombie. Comedy Is she a romance. sentient zombie? The movie. I need to know. Is this... Does he now have to kill his ex? Well, it's comedy, so... Oh, okay. it's probably a, par a horror parody thing. Sorry if we're quiet. Uh, Laura and I are 
reading movie plots. <laughs> the Island of Dr. Moreau. I don't know that one. I have heard of that one. That's one of those, like, I should know it. I should experience it because it's so well known, but I have yet to. A shipwreck survivor discovers a remote island owned by a crazed scientist who's carrying out sinister experiments on the island's inhabitants. Yeah. I think it's, like, inspired by the most dangerous game. Shaun of the Dead! I love that movie! Is there a romance in that movie? Yeah! <laughs> You're like... They're on the rocks in the movie. beginning, and they end up better by the end. Oh, okay. I can count then. Yeah. I am not a person... Like, some people... Her hands is on here? Yes. So, some people have a really hard definition of romance where, like, the relationship has to begin and end within the media. I don't think that that's necessarily true in romance. I just think as long as you get at least part of the journey and you see them end up together, it, it that's the romance. So, like... It also says The Lost Boys. <laughs> depends on how you interpret the lost boys <laughs> because like i don't know that one that one vampire <laughs> and michael but i know technically michael and the the girl hook up so yeah, i'm gonna just chalk good. that one up to another love triangle well, like, the actor who played the lead vampire in the little, like, biker gang said that there was this one scene specifically where he basically tried to be as sensual and erotic towards Michael as possible. So, like, I think he was definitively playing that vampire as if he had a thing for Michael. So, love trying. So many horrors are between, like, a couple and a monster who wants one of them. Mm -hmm. People be like, why A got all the love triangles? Nah, horror do. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you gotta be emotionally connected to somebody before they die, so it actually impacts them. And then you have to have somebody to hang on to to comfort you because somebody died. Well, like, in old horror, the main couple wasn't allowed to die. So I guess, like, a lot of horror, like, old horror could be horror romance. But then, like, yeah. then it went through a t a, an era where, yeah, you kill off one of the love interests for that emotional impact. And I guess maybe now it's trying to balance it out. Because like when I when I think of the old ones and a lot what? of these listed that were like yeah that one counts that they are older. When I write horror, they usually don't have endings that would be conducive to a romance. I mean that's fair. You're not intending to write a romantic horror. Yeah. I decided that I want to figure out how to do it, and that will be one of my skill sets that I master at some point. Nice. Because it, like, it just, it intrigues me, the very concept. <laughs> and, like, when I was watching It's Okay to Not Be Okay, like, the, the synopsis and the description was very, okay, so this is going to be a romance K-drama, and then I start watching it, and I'm like, or is it? I'm like, what, what are you? What is going on? And then we get like through it and I'm like, I kind of love this. This, may, this might be one of my new favorite things. <laughs> and I was like, yes, horror romance. It's now one of my favorite genres. One K-drama I've seen is You Are Beautiful. Have you seen Wait, that one? Maybe. Where the nun becomes mm. a K-pop star in place of her brother. I know. I would have <laughs> remembered that premise. <laughs> but... <laughs> So she's I a twin. You now. Her brother gets plastic surgery, but it goes wrong. So he has to go to America to recover. Uh -huh. And so his agent goes to his twin sister, who's about to take her vows as a nun. Like she's been living in a nunnery. 
and it's like, please be your brother and go sign the contract. She's like, okay, fine. So she dresses up as her brother, goes and signs the contract, and he's like, your brother's still recovering. Please be your brother. So she has to live with these boys in the boy band house. Like, it's, it's so fun. Sounds like a rendition of Twelfth Night. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Is it is it on the Netflix? It used to be. I don't know what if you it still mean, is. Remind me. Remind me of what. Is it gone? You are beautiful. You are so beautiful. I spelled you are beautiful and it was like business proposal. <laughs> I think it's not on there anymore. Oh, no. Or just not in my country. I don't know. I'll see if Vicky has it. Oh, oh, you're beautiful. With an apostrophe. Apparently. 2009. Uh, when I googled it, it came up. You are beautiful. Are these two different, are these two different shows that are only separated by grammar? guess they are oh my god though okay there's so much like the saints poster. and clouds yes the poster has this man just chilling just like in a suit with sunglasses i love him already <laughs> i know who you are it's on vicky so i'm good what you mean I need a Vicky pass? I'm going to have to go get my mama's account information. <laughs> but. Yeah. Now I need to know. Are there two K-dramas where it's like you are beautiful and then you're a pop? I don't know. When I Google it, it just pops up with you're beautiful no matter what I type in. I'm so confused. Just, just, just look at the Because I put... Poster. Hold on. Okay, no, there is a you are beautiful. And, and that's the other one. Okay. Look. Look here, Google. We're going to fight because you're gaslighting me and I don't appreciate it. The poster. Yeah, so there she is and the other That's boy not... band members. But yeah, like oh my gosh, it's it's so funny. So it's the whole story of like one be one one by one them realizing she's a girl. So like it's just as, so as fun. happens. Yes. I um was it recently? I don't remember. I watched a C drama where I thought it was so cute because, like, this girl, so her parents had been told by a fortune teller that basically if she lived as a girl, then, like, she would die early, right? So she had to live as a boy for so many years. And so she did, and she was okay with it. And so, like, it got closer to her birthday, and then she's like, I can't wait until I can present as myself. And this guy was, like, slowly falling in love with her, but he thought she was a, a guy. And then eventually he's like, yeah, you know what? I'll be gay for you. It's fine. And I'm like, not how it works, bud, but you, you live your bisexual dreams. Well... It was like, it was just very sweet because for a while it makes you like think that he genuinely has come to terms with his perceived sexuality and everything. And then she confesses to him and he's just like, yeah, I figured it out a while ago. And I'm like, excuse you? That's rude as fuck. Why did you make me go on this journey with him? And then he's like, nah, I already knew. I don't like that. But otherwise, it was a really cute C drama. When, like, her best friend kept trying to sabotage things. I mean, like, in a good way. It's hard to explain without details, but yeah. Um, so we should go ahead and wrap up. Because 
We're supposed to end in like 10 minutes. So <laughs> switch in the hot seats. Mm. Like. Outro time? Yes, outro time. All right. Well, thank you all for joining. I'm Blake. I use they them pronouns. I'm a prolific writer and cat mom, as well as a artist and theater nerd. You can keep up with me on Instagram at underscore Blake Bynum underscore. And yeah, I post up pictures of myself whenever I get dressed up like this in wigs. And I also sometimes share my animals. You can find my cat's account as well. It's underscore baby in the window underscore. She likes to be in the window. Uh, my name is Laura Nettles. My channel is Laura Nettles. I do all things spooky. Um, I was just published again last week. I don't even remember what number this is. It's like 23, 24. I don't know. But um, yeah. So you can find where I'm published on my website. It's laurenettles.com. You can sign up for my newsletter there. I also have a podcast called Twisted Tendrils Horrific Writing Advice, where I give advice for writing spooky things and interview people, including Alexa Dunn on imposter syndrome, Lizelle Sambury on Canadian horror, D.L. Tillery about healing through horror, things like that. So, yeah, all things fun. And I'm writing Mom Smith the Ellen Asset. I've been hosting on CB Forenses uh, channel tonight. Over on my channel, I host live streams very similar to this every Monday, or sometimes we do Let's Talks like we talked about simulacrums on Monday, which are like artificial people. Sorry, my child yelled and I was momentarily distracted. On my website, I have a spooky flash fiction and a mur villainous mur murder story short story. Uh, my website is samanthaelnasset.com. While you're there, you can sign up to my newsletter to keep up to date with all things Sam. Uh, like the stream, subscribe, ring the bell so that you know whenever things go up. And thank you, everybody, for uh, coming. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. Bye.